So we've moved to our new spot, Chen Prickly Bay. It's actually really nice here. The water's super clear. All the gear is just too shit. When are you gonna move it? Hey? When? Uh, we'll move it down now. Get some work done. So it's like Christmas here today. We finally managed to get our shipping. One hand kind of points with the other. Avoiding as much rust as I can. We bought an old abandoned catamaran, spent two years rebuilding her, and embarked on a 7,000 mile journey across the Atlantic Ocean to our dream cruising grounds, the beautiful Caribbean. Subscribe below and follow the adventure as we explore our way up the Caribbean chain of islands to the beautiful Bahamas. So we've moved to our new spot, Chen Prickly Bay. It's actually really nice here. The water's super clear and we really enjoy it here. So I think we're going to be here for about a week or two and then we'll make our way again up, up the anchorages and then hopefully to carry a coup. Dived it. We reset the anchor again. We just moved a little bit up and then Ricky's going to dive it again just to double check. But it seems like we're sitting pretty good. We didn't really want to move from the spot that we were in because it's nice here and it's quite quiet you know we're away from most of the boats closer to the beach to go swimming so yeah we like it just hopefully we don't have to move again we seem to set the anchor on a good sand patch and not grass like um, we were on before so we'll see hopefully it all works yesterday as well Ricky found uh, them playing volleyball at Secret Harbor so we've joined the volleyball group in Grenada I get into playing I'm just you I need to practice my hitting skills first before I attempt to be competitive. <laughs> Ricky's busy diving our anchor at the moment. Over there we have our friends Alan and Patricia and Audi Naughty. They were in lockdown with us in Cape Town. So we pretty much always stick together because we're all going to the same place. So it's pretty nice to have friendly faces that you know. Oh, the dinghy dock's just over there. We park our scooter there as well so it's pretty convenient just to hop over there and get on the scooter and go get stuff. It's nice having the scooter um, to travel the island but also to get supplies for the boat if we're doing a boat project. Sometimes we have to get really creative on how we um, load our scooter with, with supplies but um, yeah it's been a big help to get around and get stuff. All the gear is just too shit. When are you going to move it? Hey? When? Uh, we'll move it down now, get some work done. We'll probably go deeper just actually. It's convenient, yeah, because we're close to the dock and the dinghy is not working well, but... Yeah, we have no floor. We decided to move anchor. We didn't like the spot that we were at. The holding was really bad, so we decided to move to the other side. Not too far from where we were. <laughs> That's pretty cute. Oh, I didn't see a little kid at the back. Oh, that's freaking cute. That would be you. <laughs> tell me, tell me. You happy with our new spot? Much better. I'm going to go dive now, so I'll show you guys what a, what a decent bottom looks like. So there's Naughty Most Naughty, our friends. Enough. We were just the next side of them. So we just moved to the starboard side of them. Pretty close. Everyone's close. All our neighbors are nice and close. The holding on this side was a lot better and the anchor itself was buried so deep into the sand that Ricky actually struggled to see it. While he was down there he gave the hull a little bit of a scrub as well. Uh, wait, I wanna see what bug it is. Ah, <laughs> babes, nasty. Do you want me to reach her back? Ricky went to the market today and uh, got some fruits and vegetables but he also got some of this which is an inside of a coconut so what we're going to do is we're going to make it into a smoothie I just googled the recipe online we're going to mix this with some milk, bananas, a little bit of nutmeg or cinnamon, ice and uh, vanilla extract and then we'll see how it tastes supposedly it tastes good but yeah we'll check it out but I'm pretty sure it's going to taste very nice pull out the edges this is from our favorite lady here. She gives us really good price and sometimes she throws them stuff for free, which is nice. Having one thing of ice. That's you. You can put your coconut in. What do you think? 50% coconut? 
I don't know because it doesn't really taste very coconutty, so. So smash it. It yeah, will be healthy. I'll smash it. There's a lot of coconut, so figure it out. So we're gonna do a banana coconut one then, eh? Yeah. Cool. And some honey, please. Hey. Go. Cinnamon or nutmeg? I think cinnamon. Cinnamon. How are you gonna close that thing now? Chicken cinnamon. This is not how you make a smoothie though, babes. Babes, watch and learn from the professionals. It's like overloaded. You could put a little bit more vanilla you in think that. So? Okay. I knew that was gonna happen. There's no liquid in it. And that's how you burn out a motor, folks. <laughs> it's not burnt. One second. Some more ice. What do you reckon? Oh, yeah. Actually, it's quite nice. It's a little bitter, but. Oh no, that's good man. What are you saying bitter? That's lovely. I think that's spectacular. Like it. Pretty good. It kind of reminds me of um, rice pudding. Oh yeah. But instead of rice, it's coconut pieces. Mm. So Don't forget nice. to subscribe below if you haven't already and click on the notification bell to alert you when we upload a new episode and like this video as well as share it with your friends and family. It's a free way you can support our channel. Check the size of this needle fish. I'm gonna try and he's under the dinghy or he was under the dinghy. Look at that. Wow. That's the biggest needle fish I've ever seen. Hey? How's the size of that thing? Wow. It's like a meter long. Three foot. Rainy, 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 rainy. As you can see, only the catamaran stayed behind because everyone else was complaining how early it was last night. There's one mono. Two. Ah, three, four. There's a few there. The rest is just cats. Alan had come over saying a mono was in distress and had engine problems. So Ricky hopped on to go lend a helping hand. Tender naughty naughty. Clara, Clara, Clara. This is Tender naughty naughty. Tender naughty naughty. Just engine failure, eh? You just need a tow. Yeah, engine not working. Okay, so, Alan, how do you want to do it? What? How do you want to do it? So his engine's not working, but if he can keep on sailing in. Yeah, we'll let it go on sail until he gets there. Okay. Keep on sailing in. When we get closer, we'll, we'll pass our line. You want to go deep, deep in. Are you? Alan, what can I give you a hand with? I got it finally. Okay. The guys managed to get him onto anchor safe and sound. So our shipment has arrived, we need to go clear customs and get it back. And here's my partner in crime. Double bag. Ta -na -na, ta -na. <laughs> Let's go. Plum. Hey, you should run over Deadly and dangerous. I feel double or bondage today. Okay, let's go. So we at Port Louis Marina. 
We need to go to the customs here, get a C14, C14, C19, C14 form, and then we can go to our to pass cargo. That's the guys that we use to do the freight forwarding. What are we gonna do? We pay customs somewhere. So we'll figure it out. But yeah. No, I'll take it with. So we got the C14 form. Looks like this. Just like a little document like that. With some of the boat paperwork and all of that. All the invoices are on there. And we just did it at the immigration's office that's here. So now off to pass cargo. Hopefully just give them that stuff. Pay some money somewhere. And pick up all our stuff. We don't know who we have to pay. We'll figure that out. He said we might not need an agent. He said sometimes it's easier to do it with the agent. But we've got a scooter, so we'll try to do it ourselves first. And if it kind of gets a little bit hectic, we'll just get... We've got a number for an agent. We're just going to give him a call and tell him if he can sort out. But hopefully we can get it all done ourselves. So it's like Christmas here today. We finally managed to get our shipping. Unfortunately, we couldn't do it ourselves. We had to get a broker which would have saved us a lot of time if we got the break in the beginning. But it's all done, so now we know how the whole system here works. But Vicky's testing out his his noise-canceling mat. And uh, yeah, it looks like Christmas here. There's boxes lying everywhere. So here's the one mat that we got, and it's super light. So... That's one. Ricky's busy looking. See, look at all the boxes. He's busy. We think we ordered the wrong propeller. No, I think they sent the wrong propeller. Oh, okay. This is totally different. This looks like the four horsepower. It said four to six. But this looks like the four horsepower. Propeller. And it won't work. Like you think it won't. It looks totally different to ours. But we're the gonna stick it on. The spline's the same and hopefully it doesn't rev. Over rev, we'll see. We'll see what it does. Maybe the blade area is the same. Who knows? That is, this box was so heavy. Jeez, this stuff is crazy. Yeah, it's like butyl acoustic mat. It's for car sound systems. So there's one area is the center of the hull that keeps on lapping the whole time. I want this to eliminate any of that lapping sound. But it's not very thick, so... How does it work? Because it's thin. So the idea behind it is that it eliminates the vibration traveling through the fiberglass or through the metal. So that's the idea behind this stuff. So it's not a, as opposed to working with a thicker foam that's actually trying to cancel the noise. This is trying to eliminate the vibration from traveling. So hopefully being a solid boat and non cord, we can do that with this. But we won't know until it's installed if it made any difference. Bunch of sheets. Actually. Yeah, it's a bunch of sheets. So we'll put oh. this, and then we'll put the other one on top of this. And this is only for the critical area we want to do here. And if the other one works well for the other areas, we'll do it underneath the beds and on the sides. Because that one's the last. And that's also okay. for thermal. That's thermal and acoustic. This is purely acoustic. Oh, that's why it doesn't have the thickness. Yeah, this is purely acoustic. Oh, uh, okay. I was a bit confused. So that one will help in those critical areas. Going to take a double layer. Going to take an acoustic layer and then a thermal layer. And that uh, thermal layer has a has some acoustics, but not compared to this thing, apparently. And then Ricky's really excited about this. It was a little bit of a bullet to to bite, um, but it's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's yeah. Navionics for our chart plotter. Yep. Pretty much. Plug it in. The charts, we don't need to sit with the cell phone anymore and watching the charts all the time and update it. And um, from what I heard, this is the Platinum Plus, is we can buy the charts for the other area and we never need to change the card. So hopefully, that is the truth. I don't know if this looks like a mess. Mm. Where do you plug it in? Yeah. What's the USB though for? Should you read the instructions first, babes? Nah. You're not going to need to read the instructions. Okay. Let's test it out. Now 
we go Navionic Caribbean. Nautical charts. I mean, Fernando, hang a second, hang a second. This is Caribbean charts. Yeah, but it's still time. Yes! Yes, baby! That's how you know we got charts. Is it working? Yes, watch, watch this now. Check out all the detail. Ah. Huh? Yeah? Out of luck, man, now. So I'm wrong. Sorry, next. Check out that. Beautiful. So I found some local guys on the road and because I'm delivering this oversized hatch, see, it's pretty big. Like it barely fits on the scooter. To friends of ours over in Clarksport, which is like two bays over. Uh, I don't want to drive on the main road with this. I don't know how legal that is. And uh, so, yeah, this is the shortcut to the guy's plane. We're on adventure. One hand kind of points with the other. Avoiding as much rocks as I can. The further the track goes, the more adventurous it gets. It's already pretty muddy, but check where. <laughs> I'm not trying to get the hatch through this stuff. Oh man, this is going to be funny. The road's getting better. Check at that. <laughs> While Ricky was on the other side of the bay, they let us know we could come in and fetch our dinghy floor that was in for a phase. And Ricky checked out the local boat builders. So, Ricky just came back from getting our dinghy floor repaired, and they said that it was the most frustrating dinghy floor repair they've ever had to do because they've done it. They did it three three times over. Yep. And. They said it's a pain so they can't give us a guarantee but if anyone could have gotten the closest to fixing it it was them so so far so good but ricky's gonna taste it by the time he gets back from going to budget we'll see if the floor's deflated anything at all there's the repair hopefully it works but i think they did a very professional job yep i think they did a great job it's a bit pricey, but I think for the hours they put in, that's just what you're going to pay in the Caribbean. I think it's a fair price. We're just from South Africa, just not used to those kind of prices. But um, I think they did a great job. Uh, it, shucks, I mean, if we were struggling so much doing it, and they struggled, so it was a tough fix. Our job wasn't too bad, considering they used to struggle then. Yep. In addition to that, I lose the damn ignition key. So. I've got to hold it out so that I can go to budget quickly. So I forgot, Pretty Bay has two, two uh, dinghy docks and the one dinghy dock is right by Budget Marine. So you just go there and you park and you buy the shop. So I'm telling you, you need to take a staff, a scooter. He just has to take the dinghy. So this is why it's also a nice spot over here because you're so close to the boat shop. So we're at uh, the budget marine dock at the moment, so the boat's out there. This is one of the, this is Spice Island Marina and some of the, it's a barge that does the piling. So we just tie up there. What I've lost is my kill switch, so see that dangling line? I lost it on mine, so I'm just going to walk over here to budget marine and get another one. How you doing? Good, good. Sunny. Thanks. How you doing? That's what we want. So they got ones that take a whole bunch of a multi set. Maybe down this way. So they didn't have what I needed, so I just cut two nylon washers. Just gonna use this for now. Hopefully that works. So it's not perfect, but that's gonna work. We're very close to the brewery over here and uh, not that we drink a lot of beer or anything but it's it, they have cool like social stuff going on there so the one night we had bull riding um, and then they have like a music evening so you can get up and play your instruments and I actually went up there um, it was my first time doing a performance in front of people I was so nervous I was sweating like crazy, 
and I was like, <laughs> but uh, I got up and conquered my fears. I felt, you know, geez, I, if I could have rebuilt Lady Africa, I can go up and sing in front of a few people. So that's what I did, and it was a lot of fun, and I conquered my fear, which I'm super happy about. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe below if you haven't already and give this video a big thumbs up. See you guys next week.